chapter 3, verse number 5. Actually, we'll read down from verse 1 through uh, verse number 10. And chapter 23 of Joshua, verse 5 will be our text that we'll preach from tonight. 23, verse 1 through verse 10. Oh, 7.30 Friday night, Seniors Alive. Yes, sir. And uh, do your best to come out. Brother Gust is fired up and ready to preach. Amen. He's got a message from the Lord. Praise God. Joshua 23, verse number 1. It came to pass a long time after that, the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about, that Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. And Joshua called for all Israel and for their elders, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers. And he said unto them, I am old and stricken in age. And ye have seen all that the Lord your God hath done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. Behold, I have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain, to be an inheritance for your tribes, from Jordan, with all the nations that I have cut off, even unto the great sea westward. And the Lord your God, He shall expel them from before you and drive them from out of your side, and, and ye shall possess their land as the Lord your God hath promised unto you. Be therefore very courageous to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left, that ye come not among these nations, these that remain among you, Neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. But cleave unto the Lord your God, as ye have done unto this day. For the Lord hath driven out from before you great nations and strong. But as for you, no man hath seen able to stand before you unto this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand. For the Lord your God, he it is that fighteth for you, as he hath promised you. Actually, verse 6 is what I want to focus on tonight. But be therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses. Be very courageous to keep and to do. To keep and to do. You may be seated tonight. I want to preach on that thought. Courageous to keep and to do. Joshua was giving his farewell speech, if you will. And in doing so, he reminded the Israelites of what God had done for them. He reminded them of the great victories they had already encountered. He reminded them, clear back to their time of deliverance, what the Lord had accomplished for them. I think sometimes we as Christians become numb to the blessings of God. We take them for granted and we assume that God will always pour out His blessings upon us. But I think it's good for us to return to uh, days of the past and reminisce and remember what God has done for us and where He has brought us from. I think sometimes we cater to the trials and the tests we go through and we seem to dwell upon those things and really the balance is almost tilted on the scale so much that the trials, the weights, the troubles, all those things that we face in life seemingly overwhelm the other side of the scale, which talks about coming into His presence with singing and entering into His courts with praise and coming with hearts of thanksgiving. And the, the days that God does bless and God does move and the times of refreshing should never ever be taken lightly or for granted. And so I think there needs to be a balance there. We certainly don't minimize the fact that we all have trials. We don't minimize the fact that we do have sickness from time to time, and some have continual sickness. We don't minimize the fact that we go through tests, we go through trouble sometimes. I understand that. But also understand that God has a people that He has prepared to walk in victory, to walk by faith, to experience the blessings of God. And so, uh, when you look at all of that together, the question arises, how can you have faith in the future if you dwell on the things of the past? So there, need, there really needs to be a balance. I, I'm not saying we need to forget about the past, but, but be reminded of what God's done for us, not 
And, and I know our, our minds are pretty much programmed to remember the terrible things. I mean, my first recollection as a little boy was five years of age. And, and, and during that time, we were hit by a drunk vehicle, a drunk driver. I guess the vehicle wasn't drunk, the driver was. And, and we went through the windshield. I hit the windshield, went through it. My dad followed me. There were six of us in the car. All of us were extremely injured. Uh, there was a huge bus-type ambulance that came to transport us to the, to the hospital. And that was my first recollection. And, and really, the things that I recall as a young person, as a child, were, were things that weren't pleasant. I remember the time that the man that was babysitting him, him and his wife were babysitting my sister and I, and he, and he tried to kill us, and in fact killed his own children, and would have killed us had my grandfather and grandmother not come to our rescue. I, I think about those times, and, and as Christians, sometimes our tendency is to think about the troublesome, trialsome times that we have been through. But let's not forget that God has brought us to this very point right here, right now. In the year 2004, we can look back and say, I wouldn't even be here except it be for the Lord. I wouldn't even have made it except it had been for God. I wouldn't have come through this trial except the Lord had intervened. Sister Gus wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for the intervention of God. And any one of us would, would, would say tonight, it would be foolish to say, I'm where I am today because of my own ability or power. None of us have gotten to where we are except because of God. Amen. So let us not forget what God has done. As we look to the future by faith, we, we look by faith because we already have a track record. We already have stabilized that the Lord is good. We already have established the fact He does answer prayer. We already have a, a track record of, of the things that God has done, so it enables us to look forward to the future and say, if God could do it back then, He can do it today, and He can do it tomorrow. Amen. You don't overcome your trials by yourself. Amen. You don't have strength by yourself. It's God that battles for you. And all the times I'm wondering how many times that the angels of heaven have combated the demonic hordes of hell on behalf of our case. The great intercessor Christ has interceded for us time and time again that we couldn't even begin to tell about. And some we don't even know about. Amen. Thanks be unto the Lord. Oh, I remember a time several years ago I was going through a great trial and uh, just seemed so dark. And I got a call the following day from a pastor in South Carolina, Brother Vance Touchton. He said, Brother Johnston, how are things going? And, you know, just off the cuff, I said, hey, great. How about you, Brother Touchton? He said, all things are well here. But he said, I was in prayer last night, and, I, and uh, you really were heavy on my heart. And uh, it, doesn't, it, it just seemed like things aren't going well for you, are they, brother? I said, you're right. I lied. <laughs> things are not going well. And he began to minister to me over the phone. He prayed for me. And I'm telling you what, that so encouraged my soul to know that God even lays it on people's heart to intercede for His own. God can raise somebody up somewhere in the middle of the night to cause you to go to prayer for somebody's need on behalf of somebody else. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we never know how God works and does things for us, but He does. And sometimes we're just like the ten lepers that were healed and we never return to give thanks, save that one. Oh, let us be the one that turns around and says, Thank you, Lord. Even for the little things. Thank you, Lord. Even I preached not too long ago about those little things. Even for the insignificant things. Thank you, Lord. Let's be grateful for what He does for us. Amen. And in doing so, we can be courageous to keep what we've already seen and to do what we yet have to see. Amen. Joshua was saying, don't forget about the Lord your God. He's the one that fought for you. Amen. He's the one that, that, that came through for you. It's a shame that the people had to be reminded that they had to be encouraged to praise God and to worship Him in that. Amen. Sometimes people get more excited about the, the, the carnal, the natural things of life than they do the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. 
I know some of you are naturally quiet, but when you come to a battle and you go through that and triumph comes and victory comes, amen, it behooves us to raise our voice unto God in the sanctuary of the Lord and say, glory to God He brought me through. Whether it's in testimony or whether it's in a time of praise, amen, when folks are worshiping God, it could be then. You know, you might scare somebody to death around you by shouting out, Hallelujah! Because you're normally so quiet, some of you are. Amen. But that's what the psalmist tells us to do in Psalms 150, verse 6. Let everything you have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. That's a vocalization of our praise unto God. That's using our instrument that God has given to us, the vocal cord in the mouth and the tongue, in order to exalt and worship and to praise Him for what He has done for us. Amen. Revelation 7 and 9. Uh, the the uh, vision that John saw, a uh, great multitude, no man could number all nations, all kindreds, people, tongues, stood before the throne, before the land, clothed with white robes, palms in their hands. And what did they do? They cried with a loud voice. Amen. <laughs> oh, I believe a Christian ought to be loud. I heard a preacher preach one time that the church ought to be a loud church. Hallelujah. Amen. We ought to be vocalizing our thanks, our praise, our worship unto God. Now, when somebody gives you something, what do you say? Thank you. Do you not vocalize it to them? And then much how much more we ought to vocalize it to God. Folks can say, well, God knows my heart. Sure He does, but He's instructed us in His Word to lift our voices unto Him, to magnify Him, to praise and exalt Him. Amen. And oh, it would behoove us to do that. Praise God. They cried with a loud voice. Now, Joshua turns his attention towards the future. He reminds them where they've been, what God has done. Now he takes this step further and he goes, now we're going to look forward to the future. Sister Buck said it tonight. Some of her own family doesn't understand why they don't just retire, why don't they just take it easy, enjoy the rest of their life. But you see, there's a future there that they are being used in in ministerial aspects. And God is using Joshua, who is an older man by this time, who, who is giving his farewell speech. He's, he knows he doesn't have very much longer to live, and yet he doesn't just step back and, and have a smirk on his face and a sense of pride and haughtiness and say, look what I've accomplished. But he reminds him what God has accomplished. And it doesn't stop there. That's the difference between a God-called preacher and a self-called preacher. A self-called preacher will point everything to himself. But a God-called preacher will point them on to Christ. Amen. You've come this far, children of Israel. You've already attained this by the help and grace of God. Now, let's look forward to the future. I'm not going to be on the scene. I'm going to have to leave here shortly. But you look forward, and by faith, let's see what can be done. You see, Joshua hadn't retired just yet. He is invoking the promises of God and encouraging the saints to step out and to go ahead and to take that land and to conquer more giants and, and do more for God than they'd ever had. Amen. There's still much land to conquer, still many more enemies to fight. I want to preach to you tonight that even though God has come through for us, and we've seen some marvelous things take place in the last month or so, and great services and the power of God moving, I want to preach to you there's still much more fighting to do. There's still more territory to conquer. Yes, we have taken back what the enemy has stolen from us. Yes, we have gone back and we have retraced our steps in some cases and we've seen how God has moved, how He brought Stephen back in and we've seen great things. But I want to preach to you tonight. It's not time just to sit down and just retire and just and just say, well, glory to God, whatever's happened's happened and it's good and we're thankful for it. But it's time to go forward and see what else God will do for us here at Wyandotte Tabernacle. Hallelujah. Amen. There was a, several years ago, you remember Brother and Sister Bermia that came here to preach for us back in April of last year. Sister Bermia, a few, several years back, fell and broke her arm. And uh, she had a cast. At that time, her mother was still living with them. She was still alive. And she was trying to take care of her. And uh, with her arm in a cast. And I said to her one day, I said, Sister Bermia, this must be a terrible setback for you. She said, Brother Johnston, I am more 
uh, I wrote it down here. I am much more determined to press on than I've ever been before. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, yes, a setback is what I viewed it as. But to her, she was even much more determined. She did not let that hinder her from what she needed to do and what she needed to see God do in their lives and in the church. Oh, can I tell you, we may have a few setbacks. We may have a few obstacles to have to get over. But understand this, if God be for us, who can be against us? I say let's go forward like Gideon, that mighty man of valor, and let's do valiant things for God and see what the Lord will do. Amen. Amen. That's what Joshua's promoting here. Amen. It's not time to coast. It's not time to waver. It's not time to uh, sit back. It's time to keep on fighting. It's time to believe God for more than we've ever believed Him before. Amen. Amen. God will help us in those areas as we walk in faith with Him. Areas of what? Well, there's much more to do. There's much more taming the tongue to be done. There's much more controlling the temper to be done. There's much more working on the works of the flesh to be done. There's much more crucifying the flesh to be done. You see, we're not talking about just going out and winning the lost. That's the primary goal. But God wants us to sanctify ourselves as well. So we work on those inner things and those outer things, which, are, which would be pleasing unto God, that He will help us in those areas. Amen. And then, Hebrews 11.1, 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. There's two elements here. There's future things, the things that we hope for, and then there's the other element of the invisible things that we do not see. There's things we hope for, and then there's things already activated that we don't see yet. But that's faith to believe that. Years ago, a pastor and his wife... Uh, their daughter was two years old at the time, and the daughter developed a tumor underneath her eye. They didn't have medical insurance and finally scraped up enough money to get her tested, took it to the doctor. They, they diagnosed it as a tumor, said it needs to be cut out immediately. If this thing grows much more, she may lose her eye. They took her home. They began to pray. They'd already been praying, but I mean, they began to pray. You understand? They began to seek God. And as they did... That weekend, service come around. And while the pastor was leading the service, he said the Lord gave him a vision. While the service was in progress, the singing was going on, that this, his two-year-old daughter was brought to the front, was prayed for, and was instantly healed. He, he, as soon as he came out of that vision, he stopped the service. He said, bring my daughter here. They brought her forward. And as they prayed for her, she was instantly healed of that tumor. There was something he said that really caught my attention. This is what he said. When he was asking for his daughter to be brought forward, he said it was with the greatest anticipation that God was going to do something right then, there, and now. It wasn't just, I hope she'll be healed. His faith was, I know she will be healed. Woo! Hallelujah! It wasn't just, I, if it happens, it happens. It was a solid, definite, I know beyond the shadow of a doubt. That's the kind of faith I want to have for the days to come. It is not, I hope we have good weekend services. I hope somebody gets saved. I know God is going to move. That's the kind of faith that Joshua was telling them. Listen, you've come this far. You're going to have to have a faith that is dogmatic. A faith that is absolutely solid. In order to possess the rest of this land, to conquer these giants, you're going to have to have a no, a knowledge that you can through God. Could I tell you tonight, church, we're on a threshold of something great and mighty. I've, I've felt it in my spirit for some time. I believe it's been in the making. I believe God, I've told you before, in months past, that the, that the, the church is on the verge of something great. I believe we're just about there. And the faith that 
is activated tonight must be a faith that does not waver and say, yes, but we've got a setback here. Yes, but we, we missed two Sundays because of the snow and the ice. Yes, but we've got... No, no, no. I'm preaching about a faith that says, I know that God will. Not that He can, but that He will. And when that faith arises in our soul, it's then we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It's then that we can believe God to do what He says in His Word. Oh, glory to God. I believe there's faith that is here tonight in this service that will cause us to look heavenward and say, not what are you going to do, but when are you going to do it? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Let me bring it down to you this way tonight. Sometimes we come to church and we wait to see what God will do. I know the Scripture says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Well, that's fine if you need strength. That's not talking about waiting on the promises of God or waiting on an answer from God. Now you can take it that way, but I don't read it that way in Scripture. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew what? Their strength. That means they're weak. That means they're failing. That means they're faintified. That means they, they're needing some help from God. He'll renew their strength. Amen. When, when it talks about the renewing part there, we all go through that and we need that. But here's what I'm telling you tonight. Sometimes we wait to see what God will do instead of having an anticipation and believing that He will do something great. We just kind of wait till the aftermath. We're kind of like the liberal, or the, not the liberal, the, the modernist, or the, uh, the, what do they call that? Not the Democrat, not the Republican, but the, what's the other party? Independent. The independent many times will kind of just sit back and see which way the, the flow is going to go, and then they'll jump on that bandwagon. Oh, yeah. Amen. But, but listen, what, what, and that's sometimes what the church does. Well, the pastor says that. We're just going to wait and see. Well, you're going to be waiting a long time. Because you may not see what somebody else sees if you're not walking in the Spirit of God. That's what I'm trying to preach to you tonight. We need to activate that faith and say, so be it. That's what amen means. Amen. So be it. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. It's not just let's talk about the future. Let's believe God for the future. It's, it, it's let's see God move now. Amen. That's the kind of faith we need to have. Praise God. Amen. Waiting to see what the Lord will do, we may wait too long and get passed by. But tapping into it now and saying, I want that mountain. Amen. I want that mountain. How many mountains do you want in your life? Do you, what do you want to see God do? What do you want to see accomplished? I'm not preaching a name it and claim it, blab it and grab it doctrine tonight. I'm preaching to you what God word, God's Word says. If you have that, that faith as the grain of a mustard seed, woo, that mustard seed becomes the greatest of trees. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can say to that mountain, be removed. That's the kind of faith the Lord is trying to instill within us. Not, I hope you move, mountain. Or I'm going to look like a fool. Amen. But to see that removed. Hallelujah. Amen. There was a, a preacher I know that went to Pakistan as, on a missionary trip. And the Lord impressed on him that in, in their uh, campaign, their revival campaign that they had in Pakistan, that the Lord was going to heal somebody. In fact, the Lord was going to heal several blind people. And in one of the meetings, he mentioned that. He said, I believe God's going to heal somebody here of blinded eyes. Now, he didn't know this, but he found out later that in Pakistan, if the preacher says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And if it don't, you're in deep trouble. One preacher he advertised great miracles and healings in Pakistan. And the first night, the first night of his big campaign, Nothing happened. 
the the National Guard in Pakistan, I don't know what their name is, it's not National Guard, but the, 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 uh, the elite police had to escort him to the airport for fear of his life. They run him out of the country because nothing happened. So after the service, they told this preacher, they said, you don't understand what you just said. Your, your life is in danger because if there's not blinded eyes open tomorrow night, you, you, they may stone you. So he got to really fasting and praying. He said, Lord, I believe that you spoke that to my heart and I, and I spoke what I felt to the people. And Lord, I'm, I'm believing you to do it. So the next night come, he was a little nervous. But as he got close to the time of the service, the power of God began to move through him and he felt the unction of the Holy Ghost. And sure enough, that night, eight people were healed. Blinded eyes were opened in, in that revival service. Amen. You know why? He said, I went with the faith because my life depended on it. Oh, that we could have such a faith to say, my life depends on it. I'm staking my reputation on this. Amen. Oh, that faith. That faith that will cause things to happen. I didn't say move the hand of God. God moves on His own. God moves as He will. But God wants us to have faith to believe that He will do what He says in His Word. Mm -hmm. Amen. Joshua said in verse 6, Be therefore very courageous to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, and that you turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left. That word courageous means to be strong. It means to grow strong. It means to prevail. It means to prevail upon. It means to be firm. It means to be caught fast. It means to be secure. To press. To urgent. To grow stout. To grow rigid. It means to grow hard. Amen. Don't be passive about this. Be rigid about this. Be courageous. Sometimes we wait for the enemy to attack and then we expect a great deliverance from God. That was a short battery life. I say tonight, let us not wait for the enemy to attack, but let us attack. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand together, throw our hands up to heaven. I think if we just begin to praise Him tonight right where we're at, I believe God's going to do something right here in this service. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. believing you tonight, Lord, for great and mighty things. We're trusting you, Lord, by the power of the Spirit of the living God. Amen. Lord, let us be courageous to keep and to do. Oh, we've kept the commandments of God. Lord, let us be courageous that we would step forward in the things that are unknown and the things that we cannot see. And let us, be, let us move under the unction of the power of Almighty God. Oh, Oh, yes, for the healing, for the miracles, for the gifts and the operation of the Spirit of the Lord in our midst. Oh, Lord, we know in whom we have believed in, and we are persuaded that you're able to keep that which we've committed to you against that day. And so, Lord, tonight I pray that you would do something extra special for somebody in this service tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, Lord, whatever it is that you would do, do that, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We honor you. We exalt you. We glorify you. Oh, praise the mighty name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Well, glory to God. That's it, church. Worship Him. Praise Him tonight. Vocalize your praise unto God. Exalt the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Give Him an opportunity to work tonight. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Some of you have been praying about some things for an awful long time. 
Amen. Let's believe God to meet that need. Let's believe the Lord to touch that need tonight. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Oh, thank God, thank God, thank God. Our lives depend on it, Lord. Our lives depend on it, Lord. We've got to see you move. We've got to have these answers to come. We've got to see victory to come, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, here's what we're going to do tonight. If you have a specific need... I want you to come. We're going to lay hands on you, anoint you with oil. We're going to believe God to meet that. One of the things I want us to pray about tonight is Jonathan Whistler. I want us to bombard heaven for that young man. I want to see God move. I'm believing God for some specific things. Amen. So I want you to be praying about that. Let's do that first. And then if anybody else likes special prayer, we'll do that here around the front tonight. Pray.